and welcome to this um, presentation on Mrs. Finnegan. Unexpectedly, the previous housekeeper departed. She left not under a cloud, but on one. She departed to a convent in Austria. This is how the vacancy for the housekeeper at the Reemsey townhouse arose. Enter Mrs. Finnegan. So in this presentation, we'll be looking at who Mrs. Finnegan is. We'll be looking at why we created the character that is Mrs. Finnegan. We'll, we'll be exploring the things that she tweets about and the things that she writes about. And we'll also be looking at something called, what we've called, the magic formula of Mrs. Finnegan. So how do we make a fictional character believable on Twitter and through her emails and her comical entries. So there are two people behind Mrs. Finnegan. One of them is me, I'm Paul Couchman, and the other is Bridget Whelan, who is a writer. And together, over um, lockdown really, so from March onwards this year, we have created Mrs. Finnegan. Now who is she? She's a fictional 1830s housekeeper. And as I said, she was dreamt up by two volunteers who were working on the Regency Townhouse project during lockdown. And Mrs. Finnegan, if she had to describe herself, would say that she is the celebrated authority in the, in the, uh, in the heart, in, oh, sorry, celebrated authority in affairs of the heart and household management. She never fails to give satisfaction in her advice giving role while attending to her numerous duties at the Regency Townhouse. So the Regency Townhouse is a 1830s townhouse, or built in the 1830s, on Brunswick Square. So you've got a beautiful square in the middle and there's about 50, 58 houses around a square. And we are one of the terrace houses there as well. And the house has a view, of a, a bleak view of the sea. And if you were to come with me today, if we could have this presentation at the townhouse, you'd come with me and we go together down the, we wouldn't go in the main front door, we'd actually take this staircase and go down the steps and enter here in the basement. The basement is the home of the servants, that's where the servants work. You go along this corridor and there's a door here, which is Mrs Finnegan's room. I'll explain if you go along this corridor, round here and to the back, this is the kitchen. And above here, we've got the horses. So if I can picture up the smells that would have been back in, here in the 1830s, you'd have heard probably the horses at the back. You just smelled cooking in the kitchen. Um, and you've heard noises of the house, so all the people of the household would have been here as well. But at the moment, Mrs Finnegan is alone. Mrs Finnegan lives in the front room of the townhouse, so here, this is her housekeeper's room. And she's got lots of, lots of locked cupboards for keeping her provisions safe from the other servants. So why Mrs Finnegan? Why did we create this fictional character? Well, she offers consolation, and we, we, we know this, but, and she offers basically a consolation and a psychological lift to people during you know, these dark times. And we know that because Mrs Finnegan gets regular correspondence. She regularly gets more letters than either of us. And people really relate to her. I mean, she's trapped inside the townhouse, and many people also are trapped or were and are trapped inside their own houses as well because of COVID, people feel that they can confide in her. She advertises. By talking about the townhouse, she uh, keeps it in everybody's mind. We've had to close the townhouse down. It's no longer open for group tours. It's no longer open for the events that we do. And so by talking about the townhouse through Twitter on a daily basis, she keeps us in people's minds. She educates and informs. We often use um, contemporary, uh, historic contemporary information from the townhouse, from, from housekeepers' manuals and stuff to bring her to life. And so by doing that, people are getting um, ideas from the 1830s through her tweets and through her writings. Um, maybe the most important thing for us anyway is it keeps me and it keeps Bridget busy and sane. We needed a project we could work together um, during lockdown. We were, all the volunteers usually work together in the house and we couldn't, we couldn't be there and so we work separately from homes now. Um, and personally it's helped me to get through this global pandemic. When times were tough I often turned to Mrs Finnegan 
um, for solace. And I think other people do that as well. And she offers, well, as I said above, she offers consolation. And how does Mrs Finnegan get her words across? Well, she tweets. She tweets on a regular basis, um, maybe five times a day. She sends out letters. So every Tuesday in the morning, a letter is sent out by Mrs Finnegan. And she also writes a weekly blog post. And why, Mrs Finnegan? Well, it works. It works. We have about 1,400 followers now on Twitter for Mrs Finnegan. 150 people are sent her email letter every week. And we've got about 400 people reading her column every week as well. She has fans. People write to her. People send her letters. So at this point, I'd like to hand over to Mrs Finnegan herself. She is here. And she's going to explain more about what a housekeeper does. Good day to you, and you're very welcome to visit. Now, as Paul said, a little thing about what a housekeeper is. A housekeeper is many things. The house is lit because of her. It is clean because of her. The cook is able to feed the family and the servants because of the provisions she puts on his table. She must be as honest as a vicar in a poor parish as upright as a vestal virgin, as good at mathematics as Mr. Isaac Newton when she's laying the complicated table, and as creative as Joshua Reynolds when she's doing the accounts. Now here we have some examples of tweets that have been sent over time, very early days. My very first tweet to my correspondence circle. I'm here, I've arrived and still in one piece, although my bones have been shaken to bits from the London to Brighton coach. I remember it well. The speed they go, 10 miles an hour is nothing for those fellows. It's true, you know. And a little bit later, and about a week later, my door is always open for advice. I have lately taken up residence as housekeeper at the townhouse in West Brighton and been given a room of sweet delight, as the etching shows. In short, I am a happy woman. If I stand on a chair in my room, I do believe I can still see the sea. I haven't actually tried it, but I have faith. I am trapped in the house. You can see the date is now April. We're all in lockdown. The family has left the country and I have been told not to leave the house. How do I pass my time? What do you think? Reading the mistress's private letters? Checking the wine cellar? Playing piano? Well, if you said all three, you'd have been right. For those who'd like to know a little bit about my early life, I can tell you that my parents were very much in love. They were forced to elope. Oh well. Because of some minor accountancy difficulty my husband, my father was experiencing. And I was born in the middle of the RSC on a round the harbour boat trip. Thinking now about your own homes, are you good friends with the wine cellar? On my regular constitutional around the townhouse, I find myself magnetically, majestically. I find myself drawn to it. Is this wrong? Am I wicked? Or in self-isolation of the family away in the country? Is this acceptable behavior? I wonder how you view it. Ah, now for the Tuesday letters. My favorite day of the week. Poor, bothered and bewildered wrote to me. I'll read you. What she had to say. I tell everyone I am single by choice, but the truth is it's not my choice. A man has proposed because he will lose his job if he doesn't find a wife soon. His conversation is dull and his way is childish, but he seems harmless. This could be my last chance. And this is what I had to say to poor bothered. Your heart is not in this match. I don't think your head is either, so why give him your hand? There are worse things than being on your own. However, the one thing you're in your suitor's favour is the fact that he was honest 
about his motives. That makes me think you could make a counter offer. Now, people think that sexual infidelity causes the most heartache within a marriage. Not so. Communication causes the most problems, usually the lack of it. But in this instance, I'm thinking that you could negotiate which limits the number of conversations you have to have with your husband to something like two a week, preferably at breakfast time, if he's still half asleep. That way, you'll still have your evenings free. Ah, poor mortified of Morden. The lady of the house is accusing me of making eyes at her husband. I may be a humble kitchen maid. Doesn't she look lovely there? What should I do? I don't want to lose my, lose my job. And this is my reply. Dear Mortified, your mistress is blind to the realities of life and the appearance of her husband. You cannot reason with her. As for the master, if he shares his wife's good opinion of himself, I would suggest you keep your distance. The very ancient can still be nimble. Don't lose your job. Get rid of it after you found another one and do it soon. Now coming on to the last letter. Dreamy and Dixon wrote to me saying, me and the other maids put our money together to buy the latest magazines and devour the romance stories. What are the chances of a serving girl marrying a duke? Dear Dreamy, at this present time, I calculate that there are about 30 dukes in the kingdom. All of them old, most of them gouty. After some swift mental arithmetic for which I am famous, I can tell you that the chances of a maid marrying a duke is approximately zero. Now there's nothing wrong with romantic stories. They help carry the day especially when your back aches or your hands hurt from scrubbing the front steps. But if you are going to dream, dream about earls. There's more of those knocking around. So thank you, Mrs. Finnegan. So now we're going to go behind the curtain and work out how we do it, how we create this character who seems very believable, that people like and that people respond to. So I've broken it down into what I call the Mrs. Finnegan formula. So the Mrs. Finnegan formula um, means that we try and combine, either we have one of these elements or all four of the elements in every tweet that we send out. So history, humour, emotion and current affairs. And I'll show you an example of each one of these. So here's an example of history. This is taken, actually, I've got the books behind me here. So this is taken from, um, from an 1830s book um, from actually... She's next to me here. So this is our book called The Cook's Oracle and Housekeeper's Manual from William Kitchener, um, written, um, I think, 1812. So it's, it's roughly roughly um, the same time as the townhouse. I'll just read it out. On your first coming into a family, lose no time in immediately getting into the good graces of your fellow servants, that you may learn from them the customs of the kitchen and the various rules and orders of the house. So this is a straight history one. And I've showed you, I showed you the book there, and this is the book um, that I, I use from there. So these are these are all contemporary books, um, and so these uh, two especially are written by servants as well. So we delve into those to to give Mrs. Finnegan a very authentic historical voice. I'll leave that one. I just it just cut off there. It could be said that some Brunswick Square residents have too much time on their hands. So a lot of humour. Um, yeah, if you enjoy it or not. It's, but um, what me and both Bridget, we share um, a similar sense of humour and it's nice to put a bit of surreal twist, uh, odd twist onto some things that Mrs Finnegan says. And why not? And also we, we try and put emotion in. Um, who didn't feel like this back, I think this was back in May. Yeah, my current mood. Does this resonate with anyone else? It really did. Look, you can see 111 people liked this tweet. We've got 20 retweets, eight um, replies to that. Um, and it's a tweet I keep putting up and it still resonates, you know, especially you know, now as, as we're recording this, uh, a 
COVID's hit again, apparently second wave. So these sort of things do resonate with people. And every time I put one of these up, you get lots and lots of responses. Another thing we do is play around with current affairs. So we sort of give an 1830s twist on something that's happening right now. So Mrs. Finnegan says, if you have an eye problem, then you must bathe your, uh, your eyes with water that's been collected before dawn near to Barnard Castle, then bottled. And who can forget, especially in, um, in Britain, who can forget Dominic Cummings and his trip to Barnard Castle, very controversial. And Mrs. Finnegan had something to say about it. So what we also do when we completely run out of ideas is to take contemporary people and use their words, but voiced by Mrs. Finnegan. So what I've done here is taken a contemporary person. I'm going to let Mrs. Finnegan read this tweet out and you're going to have to guess who actually inspired this tweet. After so many weeks of being alone, I'm entirely unfit for polite society. I will pretend to be a normal person maybe strolling outside once a week, but I will continue to feed greedily and gratefully on solitude and silence. So, I mean, this was the point in the presentation where we got all the, all the people on the call to, to guess. Um, most people actually guess right. So yeah, there, was, there was someone who did think it was Cher, but it wasn't Cher and it wasn't Lady Gaga. It was actually Nigella Lawson. So that's my inspiration for this tweet. The future of Mrs. Finnegan, what are we going to do with her? We've created this character that people believe in, that people write to, that people identify with. And one of the things that we want to do is to make money out of her <laughs> because we're a charity and we don't get any funding and we want to carry on uh, doing up the house. And we haven't had any events, we haven't had any money. So the idea is to get Mrs. Finnegan maybe to help us. So here are a few ideas. We could do pickles, we could um, produce a love poetry volume. We could do her own baking range or we could give her a guide to life, love and launch a 60 pages booklet. So these are all things we're thinking about for the future. So Mrs. Finnegan requests your company. She is available on Twitter. So that's the Twitter handle there for you. You could get a letter sent to you every Tuesday. And if you want to do that, there's a link to go. Um, go to that link and click through. Sign up to her email list. And you can also go to Bridget Whelan's website. So Bridget is the person who plays Mrs. Finnegan. And that is her website. And then you have loads since March. Every week, Bridget has been writing a column, um, which is all Mrs. Finnegan. So I think Bridget is going to reveal herself now as Bridget. So we can say goodbye to everyone that's seen us. Thanks very much on behalf of Bridget, I hope as well. Thanks very much for watching this short presentation and we hope to see you someday when it's possible in the townhouse. Thank you. Bye. Come on, visit soon. Bye.